Thanks for watching Shotoku Tech. Please subscribe, share, and like. Thank you very much. Welcome back, everybody. So a friend asked the question, when it comes to Active Directory, how do you manage replication and authentication in a multi-domain forest or a multi-forest environment? So first of all, let's define the scenario. I'm assuming you're not starting a new Active Directory for a brand new enterprise from scratch. That'd be relatively simple. You just do it right from the beginning. We're talking about existing environments, multiple merging forests as part of merger and acquisition scenario, multi-domain forest, etc. So that's really talking about how to take stock of an existing environment, whether you just arrived as a new employee or there's been some other tremendous change in the organization, merging with another organization, acquiring another organization. This is the scenario we're talking about. So I'm going to show you my approach to this scenario. We're going to take inventory. We're going to take inventory of each forest AD sites and services, including the domain controllers at each site. We're going to dump out all of the domain-based DNS zones for all of the domains and forests involved. And we're actually going to go to the net log on logs on every domain controller and look at the last 10 events on each domain controller in the net log on log. The net log on log contains events indicating that a client has authenticated from a subnet that's not defined in Active Directory. So this is a key tool for finding out about new offices or new subnets that have been added that you weren't notified about. So I've put forth a lot of work assembling scripts and perfecting them for these scenarios. And while I'd like to hand you the entire code, what I prefer to do is show you the code snippets that obtain the information that you want. And then how you process it. You can spend a little time and thought put into how you want the output because generally I'm consuming this output in Excel in the form of a CSV file. You might want to code it out to a database or something else. Uh, it really is, just depends on how you want to view it. What I'm presenting here is how I try to view things visually and things stand out rapidly when you look at them in Excel with various colored lines, etc. For subscribers, I have passed off entire <laughs> scripts and everything. You know, so if you're a subscriber, hit me up. Be happy to share. Okay, so in this portion of the code, we're just making up the information about the forest. So we've defined that we're going to look at one forest here. You could have a comma and another set of quotes with another forest name. So you could have multiple forests defined in this variable. And we're really just trying to determine the domains in the forest. And then it's handy to have this nice search base uh, build up to look at sites and services. AD sites and services is all defined in the forest root under sites configuration uh, forest distinguished name. So that's what we've built up here in this part of the script. We go on next here and I'm going to show you how to get sites. So we're just going to, after we've defined those variables above, we're going to get all the sites right here. Get AD object filter object class equals site. We're going to get all of them. We're going to get all the properties because we never know if we need them or not. And then we're going to just loop through for each site in that list. And then each site has a site BL object, which is a list of subnets associated with that site. So for each site, for each of the subnets defined in that site, we're going to get more information about that subnet. And then we're going to create our output. So that's that portion of the script that gives us the every subnet defined in AD sites and services. And as part of my output, I'm going to show the site name, I mean the subnet name, which is the IP range for a subnet, uh, description and location information. We like to have 
uh, a lot of good information in the description and location field. And then we're also going to show that subnet as part of a site and what the site location and description are as well. So we're going to have a really good amount of output. I'm not going to be able to show you any of it. I'm going to blur it heavily because I don't want you to know anything about my internal operations here. But you can have all that information yourself and you'll be able to do just what we're doing here. So now in this portion of the script, we're just going to get all the domain controllers. So here we're just getting a list of the domain controllers and we're going to dip back in and get information about the site that those domain controllers are in. So again, we're correlating subnets to sites. We're correlating domain controllers to sites. We want to echo out the IP address of the domain controllers. Basically, what you're going to see is we're going to sort all of this information by IP address. So the sites and the subnets will all line up in order of their IP addresses, including the domain controllers in those sites. Uh, very handy information. The next thing I'm showing you here, I'm just showing you how to dump a DNS zone. And we want the zone for the domain name. So if my domain is domain.net, I want to dump the contents of domain.net. I'm not going to give away any of all of the work that I go through making this into something that I can consume in a CSV file or in an Excel spreadsheet. I'll leave that up to you, but I'm just showing you. If you get that information combined with the information above, you have a tremendous view of your enterprise. It's a very gangly spreadsheet, very difficult to deal with, but <laughs> well worth it. Next, I'm going to show you how to get the last 10 events from the net log on log on a domain controller. This is incredibly helpful, as I mentioned earlier, if I recall, that the contents of the net log on log indicate when a client authenticates from an IP address that's not defined as part of a subnet in Active Directory. And again, this tips you off that there's other uh, offices or locations being connected to your Active Directory. Uh, what you'll want to do at the end is you're going to also want to audit your site links. You want to make sure that each of your sites has a site link. You want to understand the relationship between the sites and the site links. We'll talk about that a little bit more later, but this is the same way you would go about getting information about each site link. So for each link here that you get in this get AD object, because we've defined, we're looking at the, <laughs> the IP intersite transports container as our search base, we're only going to get site links back. And then within each site link, there is a site list. And you can echo all that out into your output. So you can make sure every site is present in that output. And that every site has a link to another site. Okay, so we've collected all this information that we talked about when we mentioned inventory above. And so now we're going to review the output. Okay, so I've had to heavily pixelate and blur this because it's internal information that nobody should consume. But what I want to demonstrate is that, you know, you see the yellow bars go by. Those are the office locations that are known to HR from our office location list. And then we see the subnets and the sites defined in rows that are colored in a light red color, a light blue color, and a light green color. The orange bands are the subnet ping results showing subnets that don't return a ping. So that always causes us to go take a look at those sites and subnets and make sure there's something there. Now the darker colored bands, well those, the bright red ones are the net logon reports. So we can see some subnet is not defined in some forest. When you see that bright red, then unless it's just a one-off fluke, when you have a whole bunch of them, you want to drill in and really take a look at what's going on in that IP range and determine, should I add this subnet to AD Sites and Services? And what's the location and description information for that? So you have to go back to the business and chase that down. Yeah, you know, see, you see that bright red there. Now, the darker colors show the domain controllers. 
So the red domain controllers are the kind of brownish red, and the blue domain controllers are the darker blue, and then the green domain controllers are the darker green bands. And so you can see where the domain controllers are defined in each site. Now this comes back to the crux of the question I was asked, is like, how to manage authentication? Well, right here, boom. Using either the information from DNS or the information from the net logon report, we can see where we need to define subnets and sites to make sure that people aren't so signing in without any subnet or site defined for their login while they're on the network. Uh, when we put DNS in this report, we can look at sites and determine, wow, there's 500 various clients in this site, or there's only two clients in this site. So we can look at the information pertaining to how much service needs to be applied at a particular site. Do I need a domain controller at that site? That's a question that you want to ask. Now, when we have a multi-domain forest, because we've audited the site links, you want to make sure that each domain controller in each domain has a link to the other domain controllers within that domain so they can replicate. So that's where you're going to use your audit site link. And you want to have, obviously, basic AD replication topology, you're going to have a hub spoke type of arrangement. What we do is we focus on our data centers and we consider our data centers are essentially the hub for each of the regions. So the data centers have site links between the data centers with the lowest costs. Data centers are usually always up and they usually are well connected. So the communication between the data centers is expensive, but it's reliable and it has a great throughput. So that would be the lowest cost in terms of replication or authentication in Active Directory. As we branch out into larger offices that do require domain controllers because they have multiple applications that require authentication, then we have to define site links that go back to the data centers, the center of the hub. Then when we go out to subnets that don't really need a domain controller present, you still want to have a site link that defines them to a well-connected site, either the closest data center or the closest major office, whichever has the lowest latency uh, on a continuous basis. So that's really how we're going to define AD sites and services. And when we apply those costs, as you branch out farther away, you know, so the remote offices that have a site link to a large office or a site link to a data center, that remote office without a DC, that cost can be relatively high because you don't want authentication going back down that trail from another site if there's no domain controller present at the other site. Then the larger offices are typically well connected to one of their regional data centers. So that's going to be a medium cost. And then, like we said, the hub communication between the major data centers is going to be the lowest cost. That's going to help, again, control your replication, control your authentication, and provide the best services and reliability across your environment. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed looking at that notion of having all that information at hand. And you really can do that with a few simple scripts. You can schedule them as regular tasks on a weekly basis and review the data, assemble the data on a weekly basis and keep your AD sites and services, replication and authentication healthy. I want to cover just a few topics here as part of a housekeeping. So on a daily basis for a healthy Active Directory, you're going to have the, like the basic ping monitoring of your domain controllers. You're going to want to make sure your major data center domain controllers are online. Yeah, offices go up and down when you have like a organization with 400 offices or something like that. You could expect to have an office down at any time. So I might not change, I might not chase down an office domain controller unless it's been 24 hours or something. The other uh, thing that you want to monitor on a daily basis even several times throughout the day is AD replication and DFSR replication. I do have another video on that topic. I'll leave a link to that in the description of this video. So then we talked about weekly or less frequent once your process is stable. The information that I demonstrated above, uh, collecting AD sites and services, collecting net log on DNS, I also have some scripts for 
uh, pinging between AD sites and services subnets so that you can see the ping latency between sites and you, uh, and then again auditing your AD site links. Let's see if I have that ping handy. I see I didn't include that as part of the presentation here. Yeah, this test connection command is really great. So test uh, ping is equal to test connection. We're going to ping from server name to a source server DC name and uh, you can set your buffer size so that you're getting like a full packet there and you can return the IP address of the object that you ping the ping status code and the ping response time so you have the notion of whether there's anything responding to ping what its IP address is and how far away it is so you can really generate information about latency okay let's see Anyway, I welcome your questions and comments uh, in the comment section of the video here. Your questions and comments drive the flow of information and shape the quality. And I hope that you'll consider, please, subscribing to my channel, share it with your friends, and uh, like the videos that are applicable to what your interests are. And again, your comments, your questions are what we're responding to here. So I thank you very heartily for your engagement with any of the content on my channel. Thank you very much.